Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing circadian clocks. Okay, right. So, in the previous video, what we did is we looked at the circadian clock that is present within uh, all the cells of a species of fruit fly called Drosophila melanogaster. Okay, right. And we saw that basically the circadian clock system involves the oscillation in the level of these two proteins, period and timeless. Okay, so we saw that starting at 8 a.m., what's going to be happening is you're going to have very low levels of period and timeless initially, okay, here. And then what's going to happen is when you have low levels of period and timeless, the clock cycle heterodimers are free and active. They are going to bind to the E boxes in the gene control regions of the period and timeless genes, and they're going to cause uh, the period and timeless levels to go up and up within the cytoplasm. Okay, so throughout the day, up until around 8 o'clock at night, uh, you're going to be getting period and timeless levels on the rise, basically going up and up. Now, Period and timeless uh, proteins can heterodimerize into period timeless heterodimers, which can then translocate into the nucleus. However, this is a really uh, delayed process, okay? It takes a long time. There's a lot of faffing about, basically, okay? And it seems that in order for the period and timeless proteins to heterodimerize, and in order for the heterodimer to then enter the nucleus, there are a whole host of post-translational modifications which need to occur, okay? Okay, and we've listed some of the important enzymes that might be involved in those uh, here. Okay, then at uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, the period timeless heterodimers do finally make their way into the nucleus. Okay, uh, and once they've finally got into the nucleus, what will then happen is they'll bind to the clock cycle heterodimers and inhibit those clock cycle heterodimers, hence stopping the clock cycle heterodimers from activating uh, the E boxes upstream of many, many genes, and including the genes for period and time themselves. So now period and timeless production is going to stop during the night and then degradation will now dominate because you're not producing anything but you are still destroying the period and timeless proteins. So now period and timeless levels uh, within the cytoplasm of the cell are going to start to fall down uh, from 8 o'clock onwards. Okay, which is this downstroke of the graph here. Okay. And then uh, we've discussed that there is this, again, a big delay in actually translating a reduction in the period and timeless levels in the cytoplasm to a reduction in the period timeless heterodimers in the nucleus. So period and timeless go down in the cytoplasm, but then it takes much longer for period and timeless heterodimers to then actually leave the nucleus. But by 8 a.m. in the morning, period timeless heterodimers have left the nucleus, okay, and therefore the clock cycle heterodimers are on their own again. Okay, and are now uh, free to have another cycle go again, basically. Okay, and we've discussed that clock cycle heterodimers during the day when they are free from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., they will also be driving the expression of a whole bunch of effector genes, which can then uh, change the cell's behavior during the daytime, basically. Okay, right. Uh, now, uh, that is how it's supposed to work, okay? It's supposed to be the case that period and timeless are uh, low at 8 a.m. and then high at 8 p.m. and are growing in the day and then going down during the night, okay? Uh, so that in the light period from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, it's going up, 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 and you've got free clock cycle heterodimers and then during the dark period of the day from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., uh, you've not got the free clock cycle heterodimers and period and timeless levels are going down. However, there's nothing to stop this system of period and uh, clock timeless proteins going out of synchrony with the light-dark cycle. Okay, there's nothing to say that it has to be beautifully in synchrony like that with uh, the actual time of the light-dark cycle. Okay, so we've seen that there is this way for recalibrating this uh, period timeless system. Okay, 
okay? Uh, if it becomes out of synchrony with the light-dark cycle, and that's through these cryptochrome proteins, and we've discussed that when you have bright light, that will be activating cryptochrome proteins, which will be accelerating the degradation of period and timeless proteins. Okay, so we've discussed that if the circadian clock uh, thinks that it is early evening, okay, so if it's at this sort of portion of the uh, uh, circadian clock within the cell, and then you suddenly get very bright light, which would indicate that actually the real time is more around 12 o'clock in the day, maybe, what will happen is that will cause period and timeless levels to go down, and therefore effectively we are moving uh, the circadian clock backwards, okay, uh, to uh, a time closer to the midday, basically, okay, whereas if we are in very early morning in our circadian clock, so we think it's around 2 a.m. in the morning, and then we suddenly get very bright light, which would indicate that it's more towards the day, then that will accelerate the degradation of period and time, so it will move you forward, basically, uh, down to maybe here, okay, and therefore you're moving at the clock towards the daytime hours. So that's how uh, you can keep this system in synchrony with the light-dark cycles. Okay, so there's a very important piece of terminology that I need to now give you uh, which describes this sort of a system that I have just described to you, okay, and it's the terminology of a transcriptional translational feedback loop, okay, so this um, circadian clock that we have just seen in Drosophila melanogaster is an example of a transcriptional translational feedback loop, and uh, the mammalian clock system that we're about to see is also going to be an example of a transcriptional translational feedback loop. Okay, and for short, transcriptional translational feedback loops are abbreviated down to TTFLs. Okay, right. So, uh, what does this actually mean then? Well, basically, um, it's involving transcription and then translation of the period and timeless proteins. The period is transcribed and then translated into the actual protein, and so is timeless. Okay, and then the actual production of the protein, the actual translation of the protein, then has a negative feedback effect, be it, albeit very delayed negative feedback effect, on the actual transcription of the gene itself. So it has it. Uh, a negative feedback effect on its own expression, basically, hence why it's called a feedback loop. Okay, and it will then inhibit its transcription, and therefore its translation. So that's why it's called a transcriptional translational feedback loop. Specifically, you might describe this as a delayed transcriptional translational feedback loop, because of how delayed the feedback actually is.